The East, Part 2B. The Gods, Part 2B. 1. Churning the Sea of Milk. At the Temple of Angkor Wat in Cambodia, we find this high relief carving of the divas of all good and the asuras of all evil playing tug of war on a snake wrapped around a pole in the middle between the good and evil demigods. Hanuman, the monkey god, perches atop this pillar. This column penetrates through a hole beneath the feet of the demigods and churns the sea of milk. That is, the Milky Way galaxy is caused to rotate into its six spiral arms around its core by this action. The result, the stardust that seeds life onto planets like our own at key times, was called Amrita, the elixir of immortal life. A separate low relief, also from the Angkor Wat temple, depicts the same scene. At the extreme furthest right end of the serpent, on the side with the good divas, pulls Indra, his triple-faced form symbolizing himself as Vishnu, Buddha, and Krishna in one. The serpent itself is Vasuki, king of the Naga, the snake gods, There is little hope in achieving through this brief presentation the immense scope of scale and size the Angkor Wat carving covers. It wraps around an entire pagoda of the temple and is intricately carved in sandstone with 88 divas and 92 asuras on either side of the central pillar motif. We see here the central pillar presided over by Vishnu in his forearm form. In one hand, Vishnu holds a sword. In another hand, he holds a nautilus snail shell symbolic of the elixir vitae of Buddhist heritage, called Soma. In the other two hands, he holds the enormous serpent king Vasuki, assisting the divas on the right and Asuras on the left, in their task of churning the sea of milk. Across another vast distance of figures, pulling the snake like a rope, this time a long, repetitive cycle, duplicating the same characteristics of the first in the series the entire subsequent number of times. Just as there were 88 divas, angels, to the right side of Vishnu at the center, so too are there ninety-two Asuras, demons, to the left. Following this vast distance of stylistically stamped, individual hand-carved lesser minions, we arrive at the character on the opposite side of Vishnu from Indra. Just as Indra symbolized Vishnu in the future, and Vishnu stood for himself in the present. Then the past form of Vishnu was King Bali, a natural-born Asura who nevertheless conquered the universe of all the other Asuras, the Devas, and even of Indra. Bali ultimately lost the entirety of his empire when Vishnu, in the avatar of Vamana, tricked Bali into granting it back to him. The record of these events in Rigvedic history describes Vishnu's betrayal of his ally, Bali, against Indra. However, the cause Vishnu brought good King Bali of the evil Asuras and the Demiurge, Indra, of the good Devas together for, depicted on the walls of Angor Wat in plural places, that is, the churning of the sea of milk, was more important than their prior rivalry. Vishnu, it turned out, was only testing King Bali 
to strengthen him by his apparent betrayal, and Vishnu was only testing Indra to strengthen him by siding with his opponent, King Bali. Thus, from this series of tests, Vishnu elected King Bali and his 92 Asura demons to hold on to the head of Naga, King Vasuki, while the position of holding the tail of the great snake was allotted to Indra and his army of 88 loyal divas. The entire premise is a metaphor for three traits of the forward-flowing time stream in the past to future direction, measured by the arrow of entropy. The Hindu Trimurti of Brahma the Creator, Vishnu the Preserver, and Shiva the Destroyer form the same dialectical corkscrew-shaped cycle over time. Contemporary to the height of Vedic-era civilization in the Indus River Valley of the Indian subcontinent was the unification of the upper, southern, and lower northern kingdoms of the Nile River Valley of northeastern Africa. Both depicted many of the same ideas in their cosmological alphabetic pantheon. While the Rig Vedas describe the Naga King Snake Vasuki extended between the good divas and the evil Asuras, tied about a pole and pulled to churn the sea of milk, we see in this image the ancient Egyptian equivalent for this conception of time in their expansion of the single moment of death, symbolized as the weighing of the soul. Here we see Knum fashioning a man's body to the left, while Thoth, ibis-headed ancient Egyptian embodiment of the cosmic force of time, counts the man's days on the right, between them, weighing the man's soul, are Anubis, the jackal of death, and Sobek, the crocodile version in Egypt of the Greek three-headed blind dog Cerberus, guardian of the gateway to hell. The man's heart is on the left side of the scales, while a feather is on the right. To wrap all these anthropo- anamorphic pantheons of embodiments of elemental forces forming a single unified model of the entire cosmos up into one, the Vedic, the Egyptian, and the Babylonian versions all express different points of view and ways to measure the same original system. If we consider Thoth as symbolic of time, Vajra Kali as symbolic of time, the Hindu Trimurti as symbolic of time, and if we consider the Naga King Vasuki as symbolic of time also, then we cannot deny what we are looking at here is an ancient version of the modern hard science fields of astrophysics and quantum mechanics. And of course also liberal arts like philosophy and theater. The three gods over past, present, and future of the Trimurti, the rough cube of space and the perfected cube over time concepts of Thoth, later called Hermes in Greek and as one of the seven Olympic gods called in Rome Mercury, and even the six loca reincarnative worlds wheel of Vajra are all geometrically depictable as symbols for stages in evolutionary development over time. The trinity is triangle, the cube is square, and the six locus is a pentagon of five sides around a central sixth point within, appear as the first symmetric, self-similar polygons in two dimensions, and the only three known to be useful in three dimensions in constructing regular polyhedral solids.